Hey guys, this is Tony with Inner Geek Designs. Today I'm back with another video. Today I want to do something a little different. I want to do a uh, tutorial video. Recently Twitch launched uh, animated emotes for partners um, and eventually it will come to affiliates. Um, but I think this is something that we could talk about. How do you animate emotes? Um, in this specific tutorial, it's going to be about how do you animate an emote that's already made. Say you, you're working with a a streamer that has emotes that are already done, but they want them animated and they don't have the original PSD file, so you're having to work off a PNG. Um, and there's a way to do this. It's, it's sometimes as limiting at what you can do, but it at least gets you started. You can start animating, you can start playing around. Um, I think this is just a good idea for everyone to start playing around with, learn how to do. Um, but we're gonna learn how to animate in After Effects with the uh, Puppet Wrap tool. Um, so uh, yeah, let's just get into it. So we have After Effects open here. Um, we're gonna start a new project. <clears throat> and I have the file that I wanna use over here. Uh, we're gonna be using the original art size for this. Uh, you wanna use as big as possible as you can for these. No matter what you're doing for emotes, you always want to start bigger, and then once you have your final artwork done, you want to go smaller. Um, it creates less issues, um, creates just an overall better piece. Um, so we're going to bring this into After Effects. Um, now that we have this, we want to make this into a composition so we can actually work on it. Uh, so we'll right click it, uh, new comp from selection. Now we have it in here, we have a timeline, everything. Um, I usually like to keep my animations for emotes around three seconds. Three seconds seems to be good. Um, it's not too long and it's short enough to where you can have a file size that is manageable. Um, so we're going to go over to uh, our puppet wrap tool. Up here on the top you'll see a pin. This is your puppet wrap tool. And then basically if you've used a puppet wrap tool in Photoshop, Illustrator, they're basically the same in here. So once you put it pinned down, it'll now make a mesh over this. You can't see it in this program, but we want we want this one to have the mouth open and close. That's all we want it to do. Um, so we're going to put a pin here. We're going to put a pin here. Since these are the two points we want mainly to move, we will need to add more points later on. Um, and then we're going to want this tongue to move also. So we'll put one on this tongue. Um, I think I also want this eye to move or at least get bigger and smaller. Um, so we'll put one here. Um, and now, let me go down to our... So now we go down to our our file here. Um, we're going to go want to go to Effect, Puppet, Mesh 1, since we only have one mesh on this one. Um, we're going to go want to go to Deform. So all these pins we put on here now have a name. Um, so as you click on them, you will actually see that this switches to the one that you want. Now the best way to do an animated emote is make a loop. Um, you want it to start the same and the same. This way it's it's not a jarring when it tries to start all over. Um, so the way we're going to do this, we're going to actually start and finish. We're going to give ourselves a time limit in this animation. Um, so we're going to go down to these. As you can see, all these have pins already or uh, time already on them but we're going to want to go this for about uh, 210 that'll give us enough breathing room so that there's actually a, a, a buffer in between it starts over you don't want this starting out and just infinite looping um, sometimes that can be also a jarring just infinite looping it can feel like it's just too much going on at once you want a little bit of breathing room just so there's uh, it's almost like a fresh air in the animation Kind of hard to explain, but once you see it happen, it makes a lot more sense why you want a little bit of a buffer. Um, but we're just going to copy these pins, so we're just going to add new pins here. This allows it to say that this is our reset point. <clears throat> now, we'll go to five seconds. Now, since this mouth is already open, we're going to want to close it back up. This is going to make it feel like it is uh, screaming again. So we'll just drag this pin down. We'll drag this one up. As you can see, we're gonna need other pinpoints because this is pulling this up. 
Um, this is the one issue with Paparat, is that eventually you're going to have to start realizing that you're going to need other pinpoints to keep this model from, or this, not this model, sorry, this, this image from moving itself. I'm thinking 3D stuff at this point right now, but uh, the tongue's going to have to go in more also. So for this eye, I want this eye to change, but I don't want the position to change on it. So I'm going to go down to it. It's puppet pin four since I have it selected. I want this to bend. Now this will change how the pin reacts. Um, so since this mouth is closing, the eye would also be getting smaller. So I'll shrink this down to make that smaller. How drastic I shrink it all depends. Now before I get too far, I wanna make sure that these issues here are not gonna continue on because it'll be harder for me to fix them. So I'm just going to put some pins down here. The more pins, the better. This actually tells the mesh that, hey, there's points here, and uh, these need to be taken into account. So see, as we do it now, there's this little blip that still happens. Um, there's a few ways we can get rid of that. Let's try to add one more pin. Yep, still a little bit more. Add one more. Almost there. That can be fixed. That little bit that's happening right there, we can fix this little bit with scaling. So that's not the end of the world. Now, another five seconds pass. We're gonna wanna ex overextend it past where it was. This almost uh, resembles a scream. And then we're gonna bounce it back to show that the mouth is still moving. So we just grab our pins again. We raise it up. We raise that up. We stick our tongue out further. And that's okay, this goes out of the box, that's perfectly fine. And now, 20 seconds, we're gonna allow that to stay for a bit. Um, we're gonna go down like problem eventually you get you get a lot of pins you can't really see what you're doing and as you can see this is a really easy tool for anyone to pick up start playing with um, and you actually get a solid animation when you're done we'll run this at a third just so we can get a quick playthrough over and this subtle drop off, this is actually just it trying to get back to its original position. That'll fix itself. Um, as you can see, we have a little bit of playroom still. So we went up, we went back down. We'll go back up. Not as far up though. And as we do this, slowly just overextend it. Now say we realize that, you know, hey, there's, this is a little bit too much. Um, like I think this is, we'll actually bring these over here. So say this is too long. We can also just bring these back over. Okay. Now let's say we want to start this, but we want to start this, you know, maybe 10 seconds later. Why would we want to start it 10 seconds later? Well, we're going to actually bring this into frame now. Um, so now that we're done with the puppet, we're all done with the puppet. We're going to go to position. So position, we want this to start here. So I'm gonna just tell it, start here. By clicking this watch, you automatically say that I want to animate this specific part of this image. Um, so in 10 seconds, it'll be here. Now we go back to zero. You have to look at that. Uh, zero, we want this to come in from the side. Why? We want it to come in this way because this is the back of the, this is the back of the image. 
so it will naturally be coming in this way. We could actually come this at an angle. That might look dope. Let's try that. Um, so we just drag our model. And as you can see, it created a, a stretch for us. Let's see how that looks. Looks good. I think it's too static though. So we're going to highlight these. We're going to say keyframe asset, easy ease. Sometimes easy ease is just enough. That looks pretty good. Now, what if we want more? Well, we can go further. We can now click our graphic editor. We can click position. This gives you a graphic representation of the time and how it is uh, bending it for this animation. So we're gonna click this anchor point. We wanna take this, we wanna pull it. Now, what's happened is it's made this duration in this same time change so it's going to go real slow but at the end it's going to pick up real quick and drop off let's show you how that looks it's almost instantaneous it's very zippy <clears throat> now what if what if you also want this to turn red to show that it's really angry can also do that pretty easy too. Not gonna even lie. So since we have all this animation done, let's grab a uh, our square tool. Uh, our fill, we don't want it to be a gradient. That was for another one. Uh, we'll make our fill solid. Uh, we already have red selected. Make a shape. Now, we're gonna wanna take this and drag it down here. We want it to be an alpha mat of this. So now this takes this whole shape. As you can see, it also takes the animation of it as well. Um, we're going to want to show our, our uh, ape again, but we're also going to want to, uh, actually here, we're gonna hide this again. We're going to copy this, make a copy of it, drag it down here and show this one. Now this one, we just need to go in here and uh, go into our selection or our uh, layer styles. We want this to be, uh, would overlay work? Overlay's a little too harsh. Soft light might work. You kind of just want to play around these, figure out which one works best for you. What does saturation look like? Nah, that ain't do it, chief. I think a uh, soft light, but we're going to bring the opacity down on this. So what we're going to do we're gonna find what opacity we first like. So under our transform tool, there's opacity right here. Solid option, let's go to 50. Uh, let's see what that looks like off on 50 works. Okay, so 10 seconds in, it shows up. First big yell, we want this to be 50%. And at here, we want this to become zero. And once this is done yelling, we want it to cool off. You click this little point right here, this will add a keyframe for you. And then we just want to take the same amount of time, this goes down to zero. Now, we want this to dip out at the same at also. It's a few ways you can do this. We'll take this, we'll copy these keyframes. So just select them, edit, copy, or control C, and then paste them at what mark you want. I want them at 20 sec 120. Um, make sure that your animation you want to work is selected. Now, right now it is still doing, it's the same exact frames. They're gonna do the same path. So we're gonna right click while both select, while both uh, frames are selected and we're gonna do time reverse keyframes. This is going to flip them. So now it disappears. And now we'll just shorten this down to two seconds so we can loop it while we uh, talk this out. So this is a real easy way 
to make quick animations for Twitch emotes. The thing about Twitch emotes, they're really tiny, they're really quick, and you just need to get um, a quick, almost a quick nod to what the emote originally was. Uh, so this is Rage, so we just made it yell and made it turn red. Um, it's pretty easy, pretty quick. You could make this go all the way to three seconds, which would give you a little bit more breathing room. Um, but I don't think it's 100% necessary. Like, let's get this out to 10 seconds, and you'll see what it looks like with a little bit more breathing room, so it's not looping as quick. So, it adds a little bit more breathing room, gives a little bit more time for the emote to uh, exit before it comes back in. Um, but that's pretty much it. It's a pretty easy tool to use. I think everyone can learn this tool, pick it up, and this is a at least a starter way to learn how to do emote animations. Um, there are more in-depth ways of using After Effects, especially if you have the Photoshop files and you have different layers broken out. And I'll make a video discussing that as well. But this is just an intro way to do quick emotes, animate them, and get some practice in for you guys. Um, but I hope this one helped you. I hope you guys learned something. If you get uh, any qu uh, comments, questions, concerns, death threats, just leave them down in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next one. Bye.